as I set forth on this journey, may the gods of this game continue to bless me with the gifts of good fortune. I ask that you grant me the power to hold my ego at bay in the face of adversity, the strength to choose patience over greed, and a trustworthy gut that knows when to lay down and when to fight. Once that decision's made, I leave my fate in your hands. I have faith that you'll be there to guide me along this ride on the river. Check, 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 check. Raise hell, bet call those angels. Uh -huh. Better know that range well. Uh -huh. So we meet again. EPT, season 10, Barcelona, first stop. Back in the home of the first flop. Ride on the river, on the river, riding high on the river. On the river, living, die on the river. On the river, no surprise on the river. Nine years of history and tradition. Nine years of anguish and ecstasy. The PokerStars.com European Poker Tour has hit its 10th season and is back where it all began, Barcelona. And this year, anticipation is sky high. Very excited. Players have been queuing for hours to claim their seats and a shot at a life-changing payday. Season 10 uh, is so exciting and it's huge. <laughs> I haven't seen anything like this in years. People are almost sleeping in the hallway to get a seat in the tournaments. We're expecting a record field here for the first main event of the season. It's the title everyone wants to win. The EPT is in Barcelona for the 10th time. Along with London, this is the only destination to have featured in every season of the tour. Last year, we broke a record. The main event was the largest poker tournament ever held in Spain. And this year, we may smash another record. Crunching the numbers, we are set to see the biggest EPT field ever, outside of the PCA. So the all-time biggest European, European poker tour event? Works for me. Big numbers mean big names, and we've got two EPT superstars headlining our feature tables. Luca Pagano has the record for most EPT caches and final tables, but a title still eludes him. I'm very confident that it will happen one day. Maybe I will be able to lift my first one here in Barcelona. Maybe this will be my time. Fellow team pro Johnny Lodden has a similarly impressive EPT resume, most recently finishing third in last season's grand final. It was an incredible final table, by far the toughest table that has been. And to happen on an EPT grand final as well, that was cool. Johnny may be a veteran of the tour, but he's got a long way to go before he earns the title of Godfather. They call me the Godfather on poker in Norway because I know all these kids. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Nobody played poker when I started in Norway. No, everybody plays poker. The field is stacked and the stakes are high. Let's get cards in the air for the first main event of EPT Season 10. And in a new development this season, registration is open until the start of day two. So the size of the field and the prize pool haven't yet been confirmed, but both are likely to be massive. Every single seat in this room is going to be filled, so Daniel better take his. Jeez, Daniel, take a picture. It'll last longer. Mike McDonald's got a pretty good stare down, but I'd say Daniel's is creepier. Spooked ya. Luca Pagano is at our secondary feature table, and uh, Luca, it's uh, that away to your right, your, your other right. And another EPT legend up on the main stage. Johnny Lawden and the Big Lebowski. There's a record number of Norwegians in the field. No way. Couple of famous Norwegians in the field. 
Thor Hansen, the man they call the Godfather. Say hello to my little friend. Wrong movie. And former international footballer John Carew. Funny he doesn't look Carewish. And football fans will be thrilled to hear that Ronaldo will be in the room later on. He's playing a special sit and go against members of Team Pro. We also hear that Barcelona defender Gerard Piquet will play the main event. Soccer and poker go hand in hand, what with all the flopping. Nice. As we head into the third level of day 1B, Fernandez is second on the leaderboard. He's more than doubled his starting stack of 30,000. Most players still around average, although Rojas and Muto haven't got off to a great start. But the blinds are still small, 100, 200. And Rablo Rojas is looking to build his stack, picking up Queens under the gun plus three. He raises to 525. A fairly auspicious start to the show. Katsuhiro Muto, 10-7 suited. He folds, Johnny Lodden is out. Alejandro Alonso gives up the button. Fabio Breitfuss folds the small blind. Jack three suited for Leo Fernandez in the big blind. Was this avatar photo the before picture of Leo or the after? Because right now he looks like Fletch. A 10-9-3 flop. Fernandez with bottom pair. Rojas still ahead with Queens. And Fernandez don't lead for a thousand. Wonder if he's putting that bet on the underhill account. You know, I'm trying to be nicer in season 10, so I'm gonna say that the pre-flop call was adventurous and that this flop lead was courageous. Well, he gets there on the turn. Fernandez improves the two pair, but Rojas picks up an up and down straight draw. Okay, so now I like betting again for Fernandez. Lots of worse hands that can call, including Queens. He does bet, 2,200. And this is a good spot for a just call from Queens. It's obviously too strong to fold with an over pair and a straight draw. But this turn is going to be bad for over pairs in general. Well, Rojas does raise to 4,600, leaving himself less than 8K behind. Not really a fan of the raise. Most of the hands that Leo would lead twice with, Queens are not doing very well against. And Leo certainly can't fold for such a small amount, but he can't be super happy about it. Maybe he just puts it in. Well, Fernandez calls. And Rojas has set things up for a river shove. Hi, Leo. Hi, Leo. Is he saying I, Dio, or I, Leo? I guess it's kind of the same with the passion over there, huh? Six on the river changes nothing. Fernandez still ahead with two pair. Yeah. He checks. Even though Rojas has got an over pair to the board, I think this is a really thin spot for any kind of river value bet. What worse hands can call? So maybe you, Queen 10. Maybe me. That's a third of his stack. Maybe no. And only about a fifth of the pot. My guess is that Leo is calling. You can fold, though. How much is it? 25? He calls. And Fernandez shows his two pair. <sighs> yeah, that's going to sting. Hey, Leo. Hey, Leo. Do you know that Jack 3 is like the hand on my website? It's like the hand that... <laughs> now I know. Now you know. Cool story, Hermano. After winning that pot, Leo Fernandez is now the tournament boss. Ahead of two other members of Team Pro, Tony Judet and Christoph de Mulder. We've got two Germans in the top ten. Former EPT champ Martin Finger. And ninth on the leaderboard, Marvin Rettenmeier. Marvin has a seat at our secondary feature table. He's getting a massage. While at that table, Luca Pagano finds himself in a three-way pot against Ruben Gonzalez and Denis Pisarev. Gonzalez has bet the flop. Pisarev folds his ace-king, but Pagano's going to stick around with an overpair to the board. Going to be tough for Luca to fold this for just one bet. When I say tough, I mean he's not going to do it. Ever. 2,650 apiece. Nine on the turn. Luca picks up a gut shot. Check. He checks. I think Kings have got to bet again that nine didn't help too many hands and people peel flops so wide. Betting there is actually good for value. Gonzalez checks behind and it's a jack on the river. Luca improves to a full house. And he's going for value, 4,100. This is a fold a lot of players aren't capable of making, but it's a really terrible board for two Kings. Luca's generally not going to be turning many hands into bluffs. Gonzalez does not look happy. It's just super easy for Kings to be beat on this board. He lays it down. He gets away from him. A nice pot for Pagano, who's scored a record 20 caches on the EPT. He's made a record seven final table appearances, and it all began here in Barcelona in season one.
my first final table, my first uh, in the money. It was right here, 10 years ago in Barcelona. I finished third. Today, if you finish third, probably you go home with two, 300,000 euro. At the time, I got 20,000 euro, and I was the happiest guy in the world. Well, five minutes after the beats. 20,000 euros in 2004 is worth 1.7 million today. And of course, the guy who won that event back in season one, Alexander Stevich, played yesterday, day 1A. He will be back for day two. To the field, where Daniel Negrano has gone to the flop against Abu Elias. Daniel checks, Elias checks behind. Ace on the turn, Daniel checks a second time. Elias bets 600. Half pot bet. Called by Negrano. The river card is another ace, the ace of hearts. Daniel checks a third time. Elias bets 1,150. Another half pot bet. Well, if Daniel hasn't called already, and he does eventually call, my guess is he's gonna be pretty light. Shoot. Obviously he doesn't have an ace. And I don't think he thinks this long with a queen either. A seven maybe? Is it just me or does it look like Daniel dressed out of Sophia Lovegren's closet today? <laughs> I imagine that's what someone looks like when they're trying to work up the nerve to ask out Sophia. <laughs> Ew. He calls. Hey. What kicker? Nine? Yeah, nine plays. Yeah, right. You don't have an ace. Come on. <laughs> Just kidding. So why do you like yeah, surprise? Yeah, I don't have an ace. Uh, I had a queen. You're going to get re-raised. Let's do it. Oh, I'm now. Full of anger. Full of something. Probably alcohol. Daniel had a big night at the EPT party last night. Just asked Liv. That's Daniel and Liv's mom? Well, I guess our kiss meant nothing then. Did it, Elaine. Unreal. Unreal. Please help Council Stapes. Take a tweet. EPT. Back at the feature table, Johnny Lodden has raised from mid-position with 3-4 suited. He's been called by Alejandro Alonso, who's got king-queen suited in the hijack. Alonso of Arabia. A king, three, deuce flop with two spades. Alonso flops huge. Johnny may feel like he has to continue, but I think check calling there is actually fine. He bets 700 with second pair. And this is a perfect spot for Alonso to just call. On the surface, it looks like an obvious spot to raise, but there aren't many hands that can call a flop raise here. And if he gets called and misses, he might end up with a bloated pot and a marginal hand. Alonso has raised. He's made it 1,650 total. Johnny could maybe think about folding, but he's getting better than three to one. Lodden calls. We go to the turn. It's the four of hearts. Lodden now with two pair and a two to one favorite. He checks. Like the check from Johnny. Let your opponent keep on swinging. And here comes Alonso. 2,500. Johnny's never folding, but he's not quite strong enough to raise. He calls. The river, the five of clubs. So some hands just got there. Both players had good enough hands, and neither one wants to turn it into a bluff. Check. It goes check, check. Two pair good. Wow. Wow is right. The Spaniards are getting run down like pedestrians in Death Race 2000. Johnny Lodden up to nearly 34K above his starting stack here in beautiful Barcelona at the first leg of EPT Season 10. What is happening? So, Barcelona, season 10. You know, they were asking if there's anything new we want to do this season. Yeah, we should probably have a meeting about that. How about now? Now? Now is not good for me. Okay, when is good for you? My agent handles my schedule. Okay, can I get your agent's number? My agent also handles my contacts. Obviously. The action is in full swing here at the Pokestars.com EPT Barcelona. The field and prize pool are still increasing. 
but a staggering 286 players qualified for this tournament online for as little as one euro and 10 cents. We decided it was high time we use our poker know-how to select an online qualifier who we can get behind and no doubt jinx. What was that? It's time for the online qualifier. Get it? I'm qualified up. Are you qualified up? Why has someone been listening to Stapleton's ideas? Because I'm on qualifier. We've selected Fraser McIntyre. He runs a pub in Scotland. In 2012, he came second in EPT Madrid, claiming nearly 300K and catapulting him all the way to number two on Scotland's all-time money list. Qualified online for 215 euros, which is uh, really enjoyable to be here for that kind of money. And EPT is just a, a superb event to be a part of. Wow, our online qualifier is a guy who already run it up in EPT. What a brave choice. Here he is involved in a five-way pot. He bets 1,700 on the turn, and he hasn't left himself much behind. Into four opponents with a nice flourish from 80's dealer. Oh, Todd Terry has folded out of turn. Naughty boy, Todd. And look, our online qualifier is on top of it. He knows the action goes clockwise. Good start. Pedro Martinez folds. We know Terry's out. Anton Wig folds, and Vlado Banachevic folds as well. Fraser McIntyre bossing it. Nice pick so far, us. Let's not get carried away. He's still got less than half his starting stack. Yeah, but he loves the camera. Back at the feature table. We're going to play a hand from Leo Fernandez's perspective. We're going to sweat with Leo. And from the looks of things, he's got a head start on us already. Somebody get that man a headband, please. Ace Queen suited in the cutoff. Race. He raises to 500. We're playing it perfectly so far. Mark Rumi in the small blind. This is his first big tournament. He's a former dealer. He actually dealt this tournament back in 2008. That's pretty cool. Thomas Hartmann from Germany in the big blind. Re-raises a three bet to 1800. Ace Queen suited is not a bad hand to call with here, but in a full ring, I would expect Hartman to be pretty strong most of the time. Fernandez with the advantage of position calls. Rumi out of position calls as well. We are going three way to the flop. Rumi, I'm not too worried about just calling twice. A 10 4 deuce rainbow flop. Not a great flop for us. Rumi checks. Hartman had the pre-flop betting lead. And if he bets here, I'm actually fine with us folding occasionally. A continuation bet of 2,300. We do have two overs and some back doors, so I guess calling's okay. There is the call from Fernandez. Sometimes we'll have the best hand. Rumi folds. He was set mining with sixes. Better hand than us. Queen on the turn. Top pair now for Fernandez. Oh, hi. Hartman. Set to barrel. It's a great turn for us, so I'm all for calling again here. 6,500. But if we get fired into again on the river, I think a fold is a definite possibility. Fernandez calls. 23,000 in the pot. The river card. Another deuce. And if Hartman bets again, the only hands we're beating are Ace, King, and Jax. And I don't think either one of those is going to fire this river. 11,000, leaving himself only 8,000 behind. As much as I hate to say it, I think top, top is a fold here. Fernandez calls, and Hartman tables, tens. He flopped a set. It's a lot looser than I was expecting pre-flop. I was expecting Aces, Kings, or Queens, but that doesn't change the river decision. Leo Fernandez looking for his sixth cash on the EPT. His best result to date was a second place finish in the high roller at the 2011 PCA. And he's cashed four times in the dude lookalike contest. White Russian to the feature table, please. Out in the ridiculously huge field. Cool, this is fun. We've never gone to a turn together. This is new. It's Negranu v Lovegrun. Hang on, let me see if I have one of those things. Check. Check, check on the turn. And a king on the river. Here comes the bet. Mm, not too much. Don't be greedy. I'd say this is sexist to Daniel, but he, oh, man. he flirts with everyone. Bet of 1,200. Oh, there's a lot in there. Yes, it's true. This man has no hand. Okay. I don't do this, like, all the time, but I'm going to put you on a hand and then fold instead of call. 
I don't want to see. It. So there, I fold. Wow. Shocked. Yes. A little bit. No. <laughs> 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 I didn't have, I had a queen 10. Show him, he showed you. It's okay, you don't yeah. have to show him. Show him one card. No, I don't. You don't have to. That's just my thing. Probably the only time Daniel will ever not take the chance to call Sophia. I figure out what I can be. <coughs> what kind of music do you like, Sophia? What? Um, actually, I like all kind of music. I love house and R&B. So you like to shake it? Go to the club. Something tells me she's about to be shaking a restraining order in Daniel's general direction. Oh, thank God we cut away from that awkwardness. Let's check in on Thor Hansen. He's gone to the flop against Alfonso Simone. Alfonso Simone's from Italy, huh? You don't say. It's the Norwegian godfather against an actual Italian. 10-4-3 with two hearts. Thor bets 700. And Simone raises to 1,500. Lots of hands these guys could have here. Hansen calls. Thor's range is a little narrower since he was under the gun to start this hand. Sat next to Thor is Bernard Gigon, who is a doctor and looks like he's just come from surgery. Or he's come from a Patrick Bateman-style kill room. Hansen checks, and Simone bets 2100. Following up that flop aggression. Hansen calls. I think Thor is going to have a 10 here a lot. Board pairs on the river. Also brings a potential flush. It goes check, check. Hansen shows ace 10 for top, top, and it's good. Well played with top pair, top kicker. Thor Hansen has two EPT caches, two World Series bracelets, and in Norway, he's known as the Godfather. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. Still the wrong movie. My poker career has been long and bumpy. I've played poker for 50 years. I'm still doing it, still enjoying it every day I play. <laughs> I've been in Las Vegas since 1987. I went back and forth two, three times, and the last time I got there, I had my suitcase with me with all my belongings. <laughs> I stayed. I got sick, very sick. I went to an emergency room in a hospital and they discovered the cancer in fourth stage, which is very bad. They gave me no hope. They said people don't live long with this and uh, they, they guessed I had three, four months. That's almost two years ago. I moved back to Norway last year, so I'll be there for the rest of my life. Everybody is always blaming somebody. We don't do that. I'm here. I'm still going to poker tournaments and seeing some flops. I'm very happy. The doctors don't know what's happening around me because I'm holding so good, you know. I went to chemotherapy for a long time. Now they gave me some time off. But I'm taking it very well. I don't get sick or it. I just get strong, so... I I'm very happy. I'm enjoying every day. I wake up and feel good. I've got a note here to mention how much the young Norwegians look up to Thor, but honestly, it's not just them. It's everyone. Thor is one of the most beloved people in the poker world. Seat open, table 49. A player taken out by a former EPT champion, Benny Spindler. He's moving up the leaderboard. He's sixth overall. David Gutierrez is the new chip leader with more than 100K. Leo Fernandez has dropped down from first to seventh. Just behind him, another player who's at our feature table, Thomas Hartman. And we're moving up a level. Blinds 100, 200 with a 25 ante. Now's when the real poker starts. Action at the feature table. has been folded round to Christian Bauer. Oh, why couldn't this Bauer guy have woken up with 24? Damn it! 8-9 suited. He raises to 525. Alonso with King-8. Folds. Leo Fernandez on the button. Has Ace-Queen. How much is it? 525. 
That's just like your opinion, man. He calls. Call him. Uh, Mark Rumi's gonna call as well with fives in the big blind. All the stories are checking out so far. Three way to the flop. King, Jack, five. Rumi flops a set. He checks. Bauer was the pre-flop aggressor. Jack Bauer would have never missed this flop. He would have contacted Chloe and she would have changed his whole cards. He continues into two opponents with no hand and no real draw. 750. Fernandez with a gut shot calls. And Rumi will race. Makes it 1900 total. Ooh, ew, this is a small raise. I prefer a bigger raise or even a call to this. You're kind of exposing your hand and at the same time not getting much value. Well, he's got rid of Bauer. For this amount and a draw to the nuts, I think Leo might stick around. He treats us to a tune and calls. I don't know if I'd call it a treat. Queen on the turn, so Fernandez does not make his straight, but he does make second pair. Rumi quickly bets 5,000. Now this is a fold. <laughs> Too late, he's called. <laughs> I don't think Rumi's messing around here very often at all. Ace on the river, two pair now for Fernandez. Yeah, he improves again, but I'd say his overall hand strength still isn't very good. Four cards straight out there. Rumi checks. I don't think I'm ever betting here, and when I do, it's jamming with the hopes of folding out a set. He bets 7,000, a quick call from Rumi. Two pair, no good. Ship the chips to the Spaniard. Tough one, Lebowski. That two pair really tied the room together. And since the start of the previous level, Leo Fernandez has lost more than 35,000 ships. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. Okay, you got 30 seconds. Go. All right, here we go. Ramblin' on the Rambler. Terrible. Getting Metro on the Metro. Going nowhere near that one. No Spain, no gain. What is that? I don't know yet. Hang on a sec. Are you just coming up with titles and then working out what the feature is afterwards? No. Let me see that. Chewing the fat with random team pro. Was that a meat-related segment? No. Yes. So far, 1,218 players have signed up to the first main event of Season 10 of the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour here at Casino Barcelona. But registration is still open, and if we get 23 more runners, this will officially be the largest field we've ever seen on European soil. Yesterday, 518 players signed up for the first of two day ones, with team pros Jason Mercier and Vanessa Selbs both surviving day 1A. EPT8 Barcelona champ Martin Schleich busted early doors, but season seven winner Kent Lundmark and season nine winner Mikolai Pabal survived. But the story of the day was Alexander Stevic. The Swede won the first ever EPT title here in Barcelona back in 2004. He ended day 1A as one of the chip leaders with a stack of more than 100K. Right now, he's out enjoying the Mediterranean sun, but he'll be back tomorrow for day two. Yeah, the sun. That's what he's enjoying. Not the sangria or the bikinis. Just the sun. At our main feature table, Johnny Loden is in action. He has raised to 500 with 4-5 suited. Alejandro Alonso called with king-queen suited. And then came Leo Fernandez with a cheeky three bet with ace three suited. I'm gonna go ahead and call this ace three re-raise Nickelback because I am not a fan. Lodden calls. Is Alonso gonna make this a three-way party? Leo needs to check himself before he wrecks himself. Yes, Alonso calls as well. So a pot of nearly four and a half thousand. You know, with how Leo's been playing so far, I don't blame either of these guys for calling. <laughs> a flop of 10-9 deuce with two clubs. And I really hope Leo's giving up on this flop. Check. Lodden checks, Alonso checks. Yep, Fernandez checks behind. The turn card is the four of clubs. Lodden now takes the lead with third pair. Why not start betting? 1,700. Now, Alonso did flop a gut shot. He still has two overs to the board. 
He calls. I do not know what to say about that call. I'm gonna go with Ghastly. And Fernandez calls as well. What the heck is happening here? You think Johnny has any idea he just value bet third pair and got called in two spots? Eight of diamonds on the river changes nothing. Lodden bets again and he bets big, 5,700. Johnny thinks he's bluffing, but he's got the best hand. And let's see if either of these guys had a plan for what they do if they miss the river. There's one no plan. And there's two. I mean, I guess, unless the plan was to fold, in which case, perfect execution. Lodden now up over 40,000. Let's head out into the vast field where Ivan Demidov is taking on the Godfather. Made it, Ma. Top of the world. Still, the wrong movie. Yeah, but Norway kind of is the top of the world. Hansen has bet 800 on the flop. Demidov check raises to 2,300 and Thor Hansen quickly folds. Hey, be careful about raising the Norwegian Godfather. Take the gun, leave the Gravlocks. Hansen down below 13,000. His fellow Norwegian John Carew is also below average. And he's not the only footballer playing today. We mentioned Gerard Piquet might be making an appearance and there he is. Wow, Mr. Shakira himself. Shakira, Shakira. He better hope his chips don't lie, am I right? <laughs> And there's another soccer star about to step through the door. This gang of team pros are awaiting the imminent arrival of Ronaldo. Ronaldo McDonaldo? Good, because I am starving. Back to the main feature table. Blinds up to 150-300 with a 25 ante. And we have got four players going to the flop. Lodden's raise called by Brightfuss, Samkov, and Hartman. Brightfuss, the big favorite four ways. Johnny Lodden? Not. You say that, but then he flops two pair. <laughs> oh, man. Lon's in a perfect spot to continue into three opponents. He could even get a call from tens. He continues for 1,700. Hey, bright for the champions. It's on you. Two over cards to his tens. He folds. Nice disciplined fold. Samkov with fives on the button. He folds as well. Less nice, less disciplined. Still a good fold. Hartman just has ace high. And he passes as well. Less, less, good. Johnny Lodden off to a strong start in EPT 10 after finishing season nine on a high. Just a feeling to get on the final table after EPT grand final. Like, really good. I won an incredible hand on the bubble. It's over, Johnny. Every time. We're done, guys. Really? I mean, unless they catch runners. That is a runner. A oh. three on the river, and it is a chop. No way. Oh, my what? God. You guys are witnessing the sickest hand in EPT history. It was an incredible fine table. There was no weak spots, and everybody knew each other well. So you have to play a new kind of game, but it's it was really fun. Everybody was like enjoying it, <sighs> except for Jason. He got frustrated. <laughs> I'm happy with finishing third, but I had a lot of chips. I took a big decision, three-handed, with what turned out to be a flip, but I lost that one, and then I lost a few more, and then I was out. I think it's by far the toughest final table and to happen on an EPT Grand Final as well. That was cool. It was cool. And what is Johnny looking at? It's only just Ronaldo. AKA the Phenomenon, three-time FIFA Player of the Year. Out in the field, it's Negrano v Lovgren, round two. Fortunately, less awkward chat this time around. Although I think Daniel changed his shirt, which is also kind of awkward. 1500. Daniel betting 1500 on the turn, and he doesn't have many chips left. Now, in general, leading the turn is not a good move with a really strong hand, so when you do it, it's easy for people to put you on a marginal hand. <laughs> Sophia Lovegren raises. <laughs> So annoying, what is happening today? Ay, ay, ay. She's best enough to put him all in. Give that lady the money she earned. I'll take 35 change. Yeah. I had sevens with the club, so I was pretty bad. Um, yes. 
I had the nine of clubs, or any nine, and a seven. Huh? So far, no. I'd like to say this would be the most Daniel's ever paid to flirt with someone, but sadly, it's not even close. He only has 4,650 left. Well, let's check in on our qualifier. I can't believe I'm going along with this. <laughs> it's the Rook versus the Vets. Bite the soap, Rook. Make him look like a jerk. McIntyre, three betting pre-flop. Looks like he's got a customer. Noel Gaines calls, heads up to the flop. And that flop is King 9-6. McIntyre continue. Come on, Fraser, you can do it. Wow, he checks, gain shoves, McIntyre calls. Called quicker than the Flash trying to get concert tickets. Ace King against King Jack. Fraser McIntyre in great shape here. And he will double up. Our boy doubles up hard again. He's on qualifier. Hey, back in the game. Do you like our qualifiers chances? Use the hashtag EPT. Back at the feature table, Leo Fernandez has raised under the gun with 10-6. Is there someone he needs to be? Somebody needs to give Leo a timeout for his own good. Ace Jack for Mark Rumi. He calls. Now, this table were tight, I could see Leo raising here, but this table isn't particularly tight. Action folded around to Christian Bauer. He passes. 10-3 for Muto. Fours for Loden. He calls on the button. Small blind not gonna play. Big blind, ace five. Leo's Ray is getting the respect it deserves. Brightfuss comes along for the ride. We're going four way to this flop. Not exactly the action you want when you raise 10-6 under the gun. Nine, eight, eight. Action check to Leo. And he's got a C-bet when he flops this well for his hand. It's almost a dream flop for 10-6. He bets his gut shot 800. He can't be too crazy about having to fire multiple barrels with this hand, though. Rumi missed. He folds the ace-jack. Lodden still has the best hand. You know, much like the men who drive loud, expensive sports cars, this bet is laughably small. Raised by Lodden. He makes it 2,800. Lodden bluff raising here, and honestly, I think he probably just folds had Leo bet a normal amount. Right, first folds the ace five. It's back on Leo. And he will pass. Nice little play by Johnny there. And in tournament poker, every chip counts. Lawden wins another one as day one B continues. What's that like? Sì, ma che schifo, bro. PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona is on the verge of becoming the biggest European poker turf festival ever, with players from all walks of life signing up to the first event of season 10. We've got 14 previous EPT champs, poker legends, and even football greats. What an amazing start to EPT season 10. Probably no one more proud than the tour's creator, John J. European. We thank you, sir. Shout out to the real hero, John Duffy. As Johnny Lodden, who's been on the tour pretty much since the beginning, raises under the gun plus one with deuces. However, he has run into the queens of Alejandro Alonso. And Alonso will re-raise a three bet to 1450. Anyone else got a hand? Get off your phone, dude. Jeez. Strictly speaking, his hand should be dead. Well, he folded. It's folded back around to Lodden. Everyone's stacked deep enough that Johnny can call here if he wants, put on his little miner's hat, get some overalls, try to flop a set. Cool. Sticks in the 850. Heads up to the flop. And there is a deuce. A set for Lodden. On a dry board, too. Must be nice. He checks. 
I really like a check call in this spot. Alonso continues for 1,500. Alonso happens to have a hand that would call a raise, but on a dry board like this, not every hand could. Johnny calls. The turn card. It's a queen! Oh, what a terrible card for Johnny. And in front of Ronaldo and everything. He checks. Alonso likely to go for value again. At least for Johnny's sake, he's sticking to the check call line. Two thousand two hundred and twenty-five. At least I hope he's sticking to the check call line. Ah, oh, crud. That is a check raise to six thousand five hundred. Laden in a lot of trouble. And even though Alonzo's got the stone nuts on this board, this is not an ideal spot for a three bet. With such a dry texture, it's going to narrow his range down to sets, which are all higher than Johnny's, and bluffs. And I feel like people are bluffing here less often than they clean up after themselves at the movies. Alonzo has counted out a three bet. He re-raises to just over 11,000. Especially a raise this small is going to look strong. A big raise could look bluffier. Maybe Johnny will pick up on it. It's hard to get away from a set, but I think Johnny knows deep down he should probably fold here. He's gone for chips. He four bets. Alonzo calls all in. Yeah. That escalated quickly. Anyone fold a deuce? Because as things stand, Johnny Lodden is drawing to one out. Deuce percent chance of hitting a deuce. Is that lucky? No. <laughs> I agree. Alonzo set to double up. He gets the double up, and Johnny Lodden will be left with 12,000 chips. You guys, he's sitting right there. Johnny Lodden, more like Johnny downtrodden. Look at his sad little face. And I'm sure in hindsight, he wishes he had folded that turn. All hope is not lost. He still has 40 big blinds. Let's check in on another Norwegian, Thor Hansen. The Godfather is all in. You think I'm a clown? What do I amuse you? You're just doing this to annoy me now, aren't you? Can I be honest with you? I have no idea what the Godfather is. Alfonso Simone with the decision. And he decides to fault. You mess with the Norwegian godfather, you end up with a reindeer's head in your bed. Ooh, those antlers would hurt. <laughs> Everybody want to fuck today now? <laughs> Thor Hansen still has less than half his starting stack. To the secondary feature table. Two Germans going at it. Marvin Rettenmeyer's bet more than 4.5k on the turn with a flopped full house. And Manik Lerzer has called with 0% equity. What a terrible thing to happen to a guy named Lerzer. Eight on the river. We have a double paired board. Written my checks. Hoping Lerzer has an eight or a six, but no. He checks behind. Ace Jack never value betting there. Okay, that's why it's... <laughs> Translation, you fish. Marvin probably a little mad. He didn't just bet big on the river. Written my getting off to an okay start in this tournament. As is Ola Shemian. In fact, he's just taken the tournament chip lead. Oh my God, new idea for season 10. Automatic free massages for the chip lead. And do not say that is not a good idea because you know it is. Shemian's got 110K. Other notable names include our footballers, PK and Karu, and our qualifier, Fraser McIntyre. Across the room, Daniel Negreanu is all in. 39.50. I told him to give me an ace and a queen. How crazy is that? Who thinks Daniel actually has ace queen? You don't know what you're going to do? Are you that close? Decision is on David Brightfuss, brother of Fabio Brightfuss, who's been on our feature table all this time. That's confusing. <laughs> gamble, right? Yeah. Ace and oh. a jack. Hey, I got the best hand for now. Brightfuss calls. <laughs> Daniel way ahead. Super loose call and the suck out immediately. All right, good luck, my man. Cheers. It's it a nice pleasure, y'all. I uh, didn't have much fun playing, but I had fun hanging out with you people. Yeah. It's nice having you on the table. Yeah, 
Now who's going to keep it up? That's what she said. <laughs> I'm just going to let that hang there. She is not amused. Yeah. Hey, Suki, I'm out. Wait for me! For the avoidance of doubt, Daniel Negreanu has been eliminated. Back to the main stage in our main feature table. Mark Rumi has limped an early position. Johnny Lodden has 6-7 off on the button. He raises to 800. The brother of the guy who just busted Daniel Negreanu folds. Rumi calls, heads up to the flop. Rumi using the much underutilized limp call approach, it looks like. I will say only this, there is a reason it's underutilized. Ace, jack, seven. Rumi with second pair, Lodden with bottom pair. And I imagine Rumi will be check calling at least one street here. Nope, nope, Pika P. He leads for 1,200. I can already tell this hand is gonna be special. Lodden calls. And he's pretty much gotta call a bottom pair. This hand's been so weird already. Three on the turn, doesn't change anything. What's it gonna be now, Rumi? Some more Pikachu action? Nope, he checks. When Rumi checks, it looks like he's got a marginal holding, and this gives Johnny the chance to bet twice to try to get him off it. A bet of 1,900. Rumi shouldn't feel too great about his hand. In general, I don't think he's going to be ahead very often when Johnny call leads like that. Rumi calls the 1,900. We go to the river, which is a seven trips now for Lodden. This is a really terrible card for Rumi, and if he checks, he should be folding to a bet 1,000% of the time. Well, he has checked. Lodden's sure to go for value. Yeah, Johnny, my boy, you can value bet this all the live long day. There's eight and a half in the middle, and Lodden's only got 8K behind. And he bets just over half his stack, 4,400. And the reason this is a fold is because Queen Jack now beats exactly zero hands. Rumi calls! But yeah, call, though. Call's probably good. And the worst part is he probably thinks he just got really unlucky. After that big loss against Alonso, Lodden really needed that pot. He's back up to 21k. Rumi wants the table to know he didn't have an ace. Story checks out. And we've reached the dinner break on day 1B. Leo Fernandez is out of here. He hungry. Benny Spindler's got off to a great start in this tournament. As has another player with an Austrian flag against his name, Ola Shemian. He is leader of the pack. He is the current chip leader. Also in the top 10, three members of Team Pro, Christoph de Mulder, Tony Judet, and Nacho Barbero, and one former EPT champion. That'll be Benny Spindler. And still three levels to play today. Next time, the Godfather offers some words of wisdom. Thank you for going all in. I got my shot at least. <laughs> we don't talk too soon in this game. While Gail Bauman proves she's a poker femme fatale. You brutal girl. <laughs> but it's Mad Marvin who's got reason to cheer. I would obviously love to win another tournament here, but I am currently in more of a party mode. Single again. <laughs> when day 1B continues. <laughs>